In this video, we're going to create a simple spoon using the Polygon Cube and the Edge Loop tool. We'll start by importing and putting on a free image plane the picture of the spoon. I've put it below the Z, X axes because I'm going to start introducing the geometry from the top view and I don't want the geometry embedded inside the actual template. I'll go to my top view. In my top view, I'll hold down my spacebar. I'll go to create polygon primitives cube. And I'll drag a piece of geometry kind of shaped like this. And I'm going to stop shortly before the spoon piece actually begins. And I'll go to my perspective view and I'll give it a little bit of thickness. Now I'll start by tapering this end so it reflects more of what's going on with the actual spoon. I'll right click and choose face and I'll select the face and then I'll taper it. Now we're going to be using the smooth proxy, so it's probably a good idea to hit 3 on the keyboard as you proceed just to see what it's going to look like because when we use a smooth proxy, it actually reduces the volume of the geometry a bit. So I'll be sure to go back and forth from 1 to 3. Now we'll introduce the basic shape of the spoon part, and we'll do so using our extrude tool. Now the extrude tool is under Edit Mesh, and there's Extrude. and I'm going to start by selecting the face I just tapered. And with the face tapered, I'll go to Edit Mesh. Or if it appears on your shelf, you can click on the tool itself. It's that orange elongated cube on a white plane. And when I do so, I can now pull an extra face out. Now I'm going to go back to the top view. So I'll pull it out, and I've put some red lines to get started here with basic shapes. So I'll go to the first red line that kind of cuts through the widest part of the spoon head here and I'll just use my x-axis to scale it out to give it the width that I want. I'll go a little bit further because I know when I hit 3 on the keyboard it will reduce it. Now I need to go to the next red line as well so I'll click on the extrude tool once more or I can hit G on the keyboard and it will repeat the previous function which in this case is the extrude tool and I'll begin to taper that a little bit. Now, what I also need to do is add one more to get the tip a little bit more accurately. So I'll hit G on the keyboard, or I'll click on my extrude tool one more time, and I'll drag it out to the tip of the reference photo, and I'll taper it. Now I'll hit 3 on the keyboard to see where I have so far. So I can see it's not really close yet. Uh, I'm going to take the ghost off. I had the ghost off so I could see through it. And now I can see pretty much what I have. Now I'll hit one on the keyboard again and I'm going to start defining this a little bit more to get the shape that I want. So I'm going to use my edge loop tool for that. Now the edge loop tool is under mesh tools and you'll see insert edge loop. If you've got it on your dock it appears to be this kind of a window pane with a, an orange dotted line on the left hand side. So I'll click and I'm clicking where I put another red line here on the template itself. So I'll click there and I'll hit 3 on the keyboard. You can see it's starting to hold together. So the closer those new edges are to the area that you want to hold together, the more it stays accurate. I'll hit 1 on the keyboard and I know I'm going to need to put one down here to keep this much thinner. So once I've done that, I'll hit 3 on the keyboard. And that's looking a little closer. I'll hit 1 to go back. I'm going to put one right about here. And I'll get my scale tool. And I'll just pull it out like that. So at this point, it really becomes kind of intuitive on where to put them and how many. But the fewer you put, the better. I'll hit one on the keyboard and I'll get my edge loop tool and I'll put another one here and I'll hit three on the keyboard again. So you can see we're starting to get a rough idea of what a spoon should look like. Now we also need to have this not so flat. So I'm going to start working uh, in some of my side views and I'll hit one on the keyboard because with a spoon, first of all, we need to have it cup. So 
In our perspective view, let's go ahead and get our edge loop tool, and let's just split it in half. Now, if you want it to be more accurate, you could always go to top view, which I think I'll do once I've introduced that, like that, and I'll get my move tool, and I'll just kind of pull it more to the center. And now what I can do is I can go to my perspective view, and if I select the vertices right in this area only, and now I'm going to pull it down to give it the cup. Now since I've done that, I'm going to hit 3 on the keyboard to see how deep the cup is. Now it wouldn't be flat across here. So once I've started it, I'll reduce the selection by selecting the two closest in the middle. And I'll pull that down. And then I'll hit 3 on the keyboard. Now the handle wouldn't be straight, so I'll hit 1 on the keyboard. And then I'll go into side view and I'll marquee select all the vertices up into where that first edge we place where the cup begins and then I'll just pull it up and I might pull it out a little bit just to keep the volume kind of consistent here so if I hit 3 on the keyboard now and I go to my perspective view I have more of a spoon shape I'll hit go back to my object mode and I'll deselect and I'll save and there we have our spoon